Hi, this is James Gordon of Total Life here for Book Review. Today's book I'm reviewing today, American Psycho by Brent Eastern Ellis. This is from Vintage, and this edition is from March 1991. This was a reread. I tried this book years ago, and I did not get far through it, and... After my second reread of this book, I was really disappointed by this novel. I absolutely hated the beginning part of it. It is just basically, um, Ella's just basically word vomits, like, way too much detail on an unwanted filler, which is a chore to get through. But by the second act of the book, it starts to get actually better when Ellis is focusing more on the plot as you follow Patrick Bateman as he begins his, um, uh, killing spree. Uh, throughout the city of New York, but then the third act is a real disappointment. I was really disappointed with, with the final act of the book, and overall, I, I did not enjoy this book at all. Like, uh, while it is way more darker than the film, which I'll explain um, after my review about, about that, but this book, like, it did not really have much I liked with it. Like, there were a few, like, kill scenes I liked, um... But that was that was it, and I didn't like any of the characters, especially Patrick Bateman, who I despised uh, throughout the novel as um, he progressed in the book. And I was kind of uh, actually wanting him to get killed off by another serial killer or a homeless um, person, because I, I really despised his character so much to the point where I absolutely hated him. And the rest of the characters I really didn't like. Um, there's just no one that really stands out, and... Overall, I was just really bored with this book. Like, I was really bored, and there were several scenes I was expecting uh, would go uh, in the direction I want to go, but instead, um, uh, Ellis doesn't uh, do what I expect him to do, and there was one scene uh, where the, he teases the reader, thinking that um, that uh, Patrick Raymond is going to go on this like mass shooting spree, but... That doesn't end up happening, um, so I'll explain that later on my review um, about that and many many other things. I did not like this book at all, and overall, I'm just I really disappointed with it. I really did not like this book. The one thing I will say that I do not like about American Psycho is Ellis's writing style and structure. I do not like how he writes. I find that he uses way too much detail, which um, is it becomes like. To me, when you want to be detailed in the story, uh, you sh it should only be like a few pages and use um, fewer words as possible, so that way you, you can tell the story while adding bits of detail to get everything moving forward. But Ellis just adds way too much, and then there's points where he starts adding un unwanted information, like there's parts that he just adds, keeps adding on, and it's just, I was really annoyed reading it, and... Uh, and the unwanted filler, too, was not fun to read at all, and... The beginning, as I said, is absolutely boring. It's just the main character going to clubs, restaurants, bars, hanging out with people he doesn't like, and it's just it's like that for the first few page, for the first few couple pages. Even after the first murder, it's it goes it goes back to more clubs, restaurants, and all this other shit that I really found boring. I was like, can you please stop with this and just tell the story already? I'm bored. Um, so yeah, I did not enjoy this book at all, and I didn't like the film of the same name as well, despite the fact the film had two scenes I felt it was better, but I'll, again, I'll explain that after my review. Alright, on to the book review, and spoiler alert, I will be giving away crucial details within the story. Plot, Patrick Bateman, a young and very wealthy investment banker in New York City, living in his luxury apartment with a large picture of a woman on Mars watching MTV in his living room, owns a huge collection of pop music albums with a big stereo system, big screen TV with a shelf of his favorite horror and slasher films along with many pieces of fancy furniture and owns a number of health products to keep himself looking good while watching his weight and working out. His wardrobe is filled with the latest in men's fashion. With Patrick is a group of his sharply dressed, loud mouth, and rich colleagues who he hates, always goes to different clubs, restaurants, and bars, talking about different subjects while cracking rude and sarcastic insults to each other, pick up, pick, uh, picking up women they see around them, or just being annoying most of the time. While at a restaurant waiting to order something, Patrick shows off a new business card to his colleagues, believing he has the sharpest card out of everyone till they show him their business cards. 
This makes Patrick jealous and is annoyed they chose to order Red Snapper pizza, which Patrick doesn't like, how the chef cooks it, and begins ranting to his colleagues why it isn't good. However, none of his friends listen to him. Patrick then details his life by the parties and restaurants he goes to, drinking, eating, snorting cocaine, along with hanging out with many women he fantasizes about having sex or murdering them, along with being around people he doesn't like. Also explains his workout routine of staying in shape, his diet, the many outfits he wears, and isn't happy if his clothes aren't clean, which he argues with the Chinese dry cleaner owners and threatens to kill them if they don't get his suit clean. Patrick is also becoming tense over minor or annoyed of his colleagues who own more expensive items, outfits, or anything else that Patrick doesn't have. When Paul Owen tells Patrick he owns a tanning bed, this really makes him jealous. While at Harry's having drinks with his colleagues, Paul mistakes Patrick for someone else who he thinks is Marcus Hilderstrad, who also wears the same outfit, has the same pair of glasses and haircut. Patrick plays along with this, with Paul give, giving Patrick his card to call him later. While finishing his drink and talking about women, Patrick tells his two friends, Hammond and Rees, what Ed Gain would think about every time he saw a pretty woman. Ed's first thoughts were about talking to the woman, getting to know her, and taking her out for a good time. The other thought was what her head looked like on a stick. Patrick laughs as both Hammond and Reeves give him an uneasy expression and nervously laugh. On Tuesday night, Patrick is at a boring party as he dislikes the cheap champagne, the music, the guests, and the whole atmosphere of it and leaves. After smoking a cigar, Patrick wanders aimlessly around the gritty, cold streets of New York till he spots a homeless man with a small dog next to him. Patrick approaches him and asks for his name while petting his dog. He said his name is Al and is asking for money. Patrick teases him by offering $10 while asking why he doesn't get a job and complaining he stinks. Unable to relate to him, Patrick puts the money away, pulls out a knife, then grabs Al's pants, pulling them off, and begins stabbing him in the stomach, then his eyes. Patrick then stomps the dog to death, then tosses a quarter to Al. Patrick laughs and goes to McDonald's, believing that's where Al would have went if he gave him the $10, and gets himself a vanilla milkshake extra thick. Patrick's bloodlust begins to increase as he finds a very handsome guy taking his dog out of his white BMW, which Patrick approaches, pulls out a knife and guts the dog, causing the owner to freak out, then holds him down against the hood of his car, stabbing the knife into his face, then chest covering himself and the car in blood. During a Christmas party, Patrick knocks down a delivery man on his bike, drags him into an alley, and slits his throat. His behavior is also changing as he begins to be rude and mistreats his airhead girlfriend, Evelyn, badly as he gets Evelyn to leave her own Christmas party and tries to do cocaine with her. She is disgusted and upset with Patrick, threatens another couple from entering the bathroom stall they're in, and orders Evelyn to leave. Becoming increasingly jealous over Paul Owen and the Fisher Count, Patrick tricks Paul to dinner while acting like Marcus. After getting him drunk and making Paul answer him a bunch of questions, he brings Paul back to his apartment where Patrick has covered his white marble floor with newspaper along with covering his furniture in sheets. While Paul is in the middle of looking at Patrick's CD collection, Patrick goes to the bathroom, puts on a raincoat, and grabs an axe, sneaks up on Paul. When he turns to face him, Patrick rams the axe into Paul's head and begins chopping him up while yelling at him, covering himself and his whole living room in blood. After disposing of the body, he goes to Paul's apartment and makes it look like Paul went to London for vacation while editing his answer machine. Weeks after his brother's birthday, Patrick visits Bethany for lunch, an old girlfriend of his he was seen while at Harvard. At first, everything is fine until Patrick gives her a poem he wrote. Bethany is disturbed by it as it's very harmful and racist. But Patrick becomes intense when Bethany reveals she's seen Robert Hall, who Patrick dislikes, and is against the idea of her having kids with him. Also claims that Robert Hall is gay, which Bethany refuses to believe. Patrick pleads with her to come over for a drink, which she refuses, but finally gives in. Once he has her at her apartment, Patrick sprays Mason to Bethany's face as she tries crawling away, but whacks her in the head four times and drags her back to the couch as he places wood boards. Using a nail gun, Patrick nails her hands to the wood boards so she can't move. Patrick then gets a video camera and begins recording this as he continues to nail her hands, biting off her exposed fingers and tears open her clothing with a pair of scissors while mocking her by screaming back, then cuts her tongue. Patrick then sprays more mace and beats her to death. 
During the summer, Patrick is listening to his music in his office while having a bad headache and is dueling a headless woman on the cover of a magazine when Jen, his secretary, buzzes him that a Mr. Donald Kimball is waiting to see him. Patrick wants her to get rid of him, but she reveals he's a private investigator and knows he's here. Patrick has Jen send him in while acting like he's talking on the phone. Kimball explains he's been hired by Paul's parents to find their missing son who mysteriously disappeared. Kimball asks Patrick what does he know about Paul, which he mostly makes up stories about him, while asking Kimball questions about any fingerprints or evidence found at Paul's apartment. Kimball replies that some of Paul's clothes and suitcase are missing along with a message on his answer machine claiming he's gone to London, which Patrick lies that Paul owes his girlfriend money and fled to avoid paying her. However, Patrick is feeling nervous as he thinks Kimball is on to him and his stories don't match up with other interviews he had with his colleagues he's spoken to, but has nothing to go on yet. Patrick becomes more violent and brutal in his murders, disavowing women and eating body parts while filming himself and even targets children at one point while going on a mass shooting spree. He is nearly killed during a shootout with police but escapes with SWAT being called in followed by a helicopter. Patrick calls his lawyer, confessing every murder he has done, but when he meets him, he claims his joke was amusing, but states that Paul isn't dead as he had dinner, dinner with him twice in London. However, his insanity begins to lose touch with reality as Patrick begins questioning if anything that's happening is real or just a wild fantasy. His colleagues and women he hangs out with begin avoiding him or leave as his behavior is becoming unbearable, causing Patrick to become lonely, angry, and frustrated by the world around him. While Jen loves him, but refuses to become closer to her, fearing he'll hurt her. As the 80s come to an end, he only wishes to continue his murder spree and inflict pain on everyone around him. American Psycho is a very dark, brutal, and at times very disturbing journey of a crazy psychopathic killer. While it is very detailed, however, Ellis overuses his words to the point where it's just page after page of unwanted or unnecessary detail on subjects that aren't important or adds unwanted filler. There are times I couldn't stand Ellis' writing style or how he is telling the story as he focuses too much on detail and filler, not enough attention on the story plot. There isn't a single character I like within this novel, especially the main character, Patrick Bayman, a disgusting racist bigot filled with nothing but the hatred and his cruelty towards animals, along with his views on other races wa wanted me to see him get killed or suffer a terrible fate by another killer or a homeless person killing Patrick would have been amusing too. And there were times I was bored with the novel with a bunch of characters I hardly liked, flat and dull conversations with nothing to interest me, along with the many clubs, bars, restaurants that overfilled the pages. I felt if many of these scenes were cut out and replaced with more carnage and getting understanding on why Patrick is doing the things he does would have been a lot better, but there were moments that I were very disappointed with, such as the shooting spree scene, which... The author teases the reader when Patrick reveals he has an Uzi and Ruger Mini in his gym locker and is planning to using it soon, only to use a 357 make them, shoots a few people, then gets into a small shootout with police. And felt Patrick could have done more, as I would have liked to see different kills with power tools and other objects and weapons that could have been given to him, but Ellis doesn't go further with this. Towards the, the end, everything begins to slow down with Patrick world falling apart around him while going to different places and hanging out with people he doesn't like. Just like the beginning of the novel was hoping for a more shocking ending than what I got. Overall, I don't recommend American Psycho. It's not for the faint-hearted with many scenes that are very shocking and disgusting at times and moments that would make most people angry at the main character. It can also be a real chore to get through as the beginning part is very difficult to get through without getting bored by the overuse of unwanted detail. And as for the 2000 film, the same name isn't that good either. While I felt it improved two scenes from the novel and liked how the main character finishes off with the film with a short narration, but felt cut and dry. There, there was hardly any personality to the characters. Scenes were very short and moved too, on too quickly and was lacking the violence and darkness the novel had. While it was very well shot, but scenery views of NYC isn't enough to save it. Not impressed with both the novel or the film of the same name, not worth reading or seeing if you ask me. I'm sure you can find better novels or even films about fictional serial killers than American Psycho. And that's the review today, hope you enjoyed it, and yeah, this was a real disappointing book to read, and uh, I'm so glad I finished it uh, yesterday, as I was really not liking it anymore. I was I was I was thinking maybe I might like this book uh, maybe uh, it will get better uh, as it was uh, during the second act I felt it was starting to get actually better but 
by the third act, it all just just kind of uh, basically went downhill, and I basically uh, was not impressed how the story ended. And but overall, I really hated the main character the most. Like, I I have a feeling this is a character you're not supposed to like. Um, uh, like, like there's villains that, that I like, but Patrick Bateman is not definitely not one of them. And oh, like this is a very shocking and um, very disturbing novel at times as there were scenes that were just making me cringe at just how like uh, graphic it was um, uh, like th there's one scene where he uh, Patrick Bateman uh, kills this uh, one uh, model and how he dismembers her uh, while using a power drill it was really uh, really just like just maybe cringe that I just instantly just just turn the page just to get the scene over with um, and every time that uh, a dog was mentioned in this book, I was dr was dreading to having to read the gruesome death of it because there's th this guy uh, has uh, no care for animals. He like enjoys killing like killing dogs, and it's just I I really it's just making my blood boil. It's like uh, the only other animal death in here is just it's just a rat. So uh, I like rats though. So I was. Um, I just glad it didn't have any more animals in it, and um, but overall, it's just I found the book so boring at times. Like there was just the overuse of detail is just um, the one issue I have with this book. Like Ella's just this word vomits way too much unnecessary detail to the point where it's just it's just a chore to, to get through, and it, it was just not fun reading through it. Like page after page after page of detail, it's just not fun to read, and. Uh, there was a, a few like iconic um, um, landmarks in the book, um, with one uh, place and person that was mentioned constantly over the book, and I was really getting sick of um, every time this um, the main character would bring up this person, and I am not going to say his name because I despise this person, um, but I just didn't. I, there was like nothing. I was trying to find something to like for this book, and there was nothing to like about it at all. There was nothing, and, um, uh, like, so, some of the kill scenes I, I did enjoy, like, um, my, I think my favorite scene is when, uh, Patrick kills Paul in his apartment with the axe, um, however, I felt the film, uh, that was the only scene from the film I felt was improved, which was a lot better than the novel, even though the novel scene is still quite graphic, along with, um, the, um, the scene where, where Patrick is showing off like the business card, and then uh, his colleagues show them their cards, and they're better than his. The, again, that was uh, done a lot better in the film as in the book. It's they're at a restaurant showing off their business cards, and I felt this the film this the, the scene in the film was a lot better. But yeah, the film sadly doesn't scratch the surface of the book that much. And when I was uh, doing when I was reading some doing some research on this book, I discovered that. Um, David Cronenberg was actually one point attached to direct American Psycho, and Brad Pitt was going to star in it. I thought all oh, his version probably would have been a lot better, but unfortunately, um, Eastern Ellis had like tight control on the, the on the script, so I guess uh, David Cronenberg wasn't allowed to write his own screenplay. As he uh, David was dissatisfied with Paul's uh, Paul with uh, Ellis' uh, first draft, and then someone else wrote another draft, and he said that one was even worse, and basically uh, left the project as David Kronberg wanted to actually cut all the restaurant and club scenes out because he felt it was unnecessary and wanted to focus more on the violence. That would have been a better film, if you ask me. It's just a shame that he didn't get to direct it. Um, there, the characters in the book, I really disliked the characters. There, I, I disliked all... All of them, especially Patrick Bateman, who I really hated the most throughout the book, and the rest of the characters are just so flat and boring. There's nothing to like about them, and uh, Patrick's like fiance is a total airhead, Evelyn. She's just this, just this rich, dumb woman that, that doesn't know what the hell is going on, and. There's a part where um, she really wants to marry Patrick, Patrick, and Patrick says. You know what? Let's have a wedding, but I'm gonna bring a assault rifle and massacre your entire family. And his girlfriend really just stares at him and says, "We should totally do it. We should just get married." I'm like, "Did you not hear what he just said?" Oh, like just, just, just this clueless person doesn't know what's going on. And oh, I, oh, I really did not like this book at all. Just I did not enjoy it. And the one thing that was absolutely 
the biggest disappointment was the um, shooting spree scene. I was expecting uh, it to be a lot more shocking and violent, but um, uh, it's, it's not, unfortunately, how I uh, it, go, it doesn't go the way I wanted to. And even when uh, Ellis decides to tease the reader by uh, having a scene where Patrick uh, opens his gym locker and, you, and he reveals that he's got like a Uzi submachine gun and a Ruger Mini 14 uh, assault rifle, uh, uh, a semi-auto rifle he, he's planning on using using soon, but instead he just uses a three a 357 Magnum, shoots a few people, then gets into a small gunfight with with police, and then escapes, and that's it. I was really disappointed. I was expecting the shooting scene to be a lot more graphic than when I got in the book, and overall, I was just I was just really bored with this book, and I did not enjoy it. So, yeah. Um, as for other novels by uh, Ellis, um, I think there is like only two that um, I'll, ch I'll check out, but I don't know if I'm going to like those or not, so when I go to read them, I'll find out if I like them or not. Um, yeah, this is definitely a book that I would not recommend. It's um, not for the faint-hearted, as I said, it's, it's very graphic and shocking at times, and there is, it's got moments that I think will make you... Uh, very uh, angry than anything else. Is. The the main character is very racist and and and, and just reading having to read like his thoughts and like what he s says to people he dislikes. It's it's not pleasant to read at all. So this is definitely not a book for everyone. And yeah, just not a good book if you ask me. All right. That's the review today. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will be moving on to my next book for the Summer Slar 2 series, so I don't fall behind on this. Um, my next book I'll be reading, Temple by Matthew Riley. This is a really good book. Uh, it is very fixed, so I'm going to get started reading on this right away. And at the same time, I will uh, read more of uh, Dragons of Light, the anthology. I get that wrapped up too, so that way I have that finished, and then... Um, just uh, read through um, uh, temp uh, Temple as much as I can to get that book done, and then you know, coming August, I'll just be trying trying to read uh, uh, through the rest of the books I picked out, so that way I can um, finish the books that I picked out, and while well, keeping my Summer Slaughter 2 uh, series um, going, so that way I can finish it on time, and then in September, I'm planning on doing a Dark Tower series, uh, I'm looking forward to doing that as I got the first four books. So hopefully that will be good. We're reading some other books uh, at the uh, uh, same time in September. And then once October comes, it will be uh, October Terror. We'll all be reading nothing but horror throughout the whole month of October. So I want to try to get more horror books read in October and definitely uh, make up for it. Um, because last year I only read three and that didn't go well. So I'm hoping this year will be, uh, will be a lot better for October Terror. And December, I'll just be reading a bunch of, of just uh, other books, and then next year, I'll have um, some other series planned out for, for next year. All right, if you enjoy this video, please like it, share it, and don't forget to subscribe to October Library, the YouTube channel, and the Facebook group of the same name, a place to post your review of fiction. Until then, I'll catch you later.